everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Fortress of a podcast about movies, TV shows, video games, and lots of pop culture nerd things. My name is Oscar B, one of your hosts today. And with me, per usual, we got Brian, a.k.a. New Reliable, a.k.a. Mr. Negative on the Dragon Ball Z Redemption arc, and Devin, <laughs> a.k.a. Mr. Nowhere. Mm-hmm. How are we all doing today? Good. Feeling good, man. Yeah. I'm glad mm-hmm. one of us is. I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I exist. I'm a human. I sometimes. It's all we can ask for. <laughs> That's all we can ask for. Another day. Yeah. Well, guys, we since we obviously we have a big show today, a lot of stuff to talk about, including our main topic. Should we just hop right into it? Mm-hmm. Let's do it. News talk. First piece of news. This is pretty obvious. Yeah. Any, Hollywood. Anything big happen? Anything this big? Week? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, Our some, show some is canceled because we'll never get a TV <laughs> show or movie ever again. Because Hollywood it's sucks true. and doesn't want to pay true. humans. <laughs> We're going to be going back and recapping a lot of old shit if this keeps going. We're now relying on AI to make our, our podcast. <laughs> uh, yes, listeners, if you don't know, the Writers Guild of America announced that they are going on fucking strike. Yeah, this is a pretty big thing. Pretty big news. Mm-hmm. Um, there were obviously talks and Stuff like this has happened in the past, but usually they've settled before a strike happened, except since, what was it, 2007, 2008? 2007, 2008, one. yep, that was the biggest one that we uh, saw, Oof. and uh, we, as people in our 30s, saw the ramifications of it. Sure mm-hmm. did. <laughs> Jersey Shore. I remember Transformers 2. <laughs> and X-Men Origins Wolverine. And uh, that one, yep. <laughs> uh, Heroes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Man. What a multiverse yep. would have looked like if Heroes uh, didn't have the writer's strike. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> um yeah, I mean, obviously, this isn't really going to affect anything majorly right now. Obviously, there's things like late night shows that are just completely done. The writers are not working on it. It turns out comedians can't make jokes without uh, writers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but most of the stuff, obviously, is stuff that will happen for a foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. But we have learned of things that have halted production. Um, mm-hmm. Things like uh, Stranger Things Season 5. Uh, they just halted all that because obviously they know that writers don't just write and then they film. There's rewrites. There's things like that that happen during during production. So a lot of that stuff has been d- stopped. Uh, one of the funnier ones, not funny. Pe- uh, obviously, we should say pay pay your writers. Let's let's figure this shit out and pay them a livable wage. <laughs> like like for real. Let's. And it. also, we we do have the the another big thing is they want to have creative um property when it comes to we know AI is becoming a big thing as well. Artificial intelligence mm. yes. um, is yes. being a weird place in the space, and they want to know that they have the rights to their stuff, and that AI is not allowed to use it to make new stuff based on their work. Ooh, right. AI is just cu- AI is gonna fuck up the whole game it's ruined every game i mean it really is it's, we've made it's... movies about it with writers <laughs> right right it's yeah. like everything that's been made on film will come true we're fucking ourselves <laughs> yeah it's crazy how we just have the prophecy and we just ignore it like what it's so nuts it's so nuts i mean it's funny to me that this writer's strike was like in the works and then you know for just for, to catch up on streaming like you know because the the model's different like residuals from the tv sh- TV show era, like Friends and, you know, 2000s, writers could live off of that when it would air and get broadcasters, whatever. But now streaming, streaming, that whole model's gone. And so I think that's what kind of started this idea for a strike was like, hey, we need to catch up, kind of recalibrate some stuff, rebalance for the streaming, you know, obviously the way streaming is now because we're not getting compensated enough. And then like, as the strike is like kind of in the works, chat GBT just blows up and like the, yeah. just AI takes pop culture by storm. So they got to, not only catch up, but also try to insulate themselves <laughs> from future risk. We fucking at the same hate time. artists, and it's just even yeah. worse than it ever was, which is crazy because we already yeah. weren't paying artists well, and they were paying mm-hmm. artists even worse. <laughs> it, yep. It's become right. a gig economy to be a writer, which is crazy. Yeah. yeah, sadly, it's also a thing where it's like a lot of other jobs as well, where it's like every other position except the bottom of the of the totem pole will get pay raises based on inflation, mm-hmm. except for those people, right. and it's just like. That what are you doing? <laughs> People mm. need to live. Every other every other thing is going up in price except what you earn. Come on, wait, like, wait, what wait. the fuck? You mean to tell me that there's something wrong with corporate America? <laughs> Do you mean to tell me that the corporate model that we've had for the last 20, 30 years is somehow fundamentally broken and unequal? Right? And we built us. on this. We love that three <laughs> people have all the money and everyone else fucking four. It's my favorite. <laughs> gotta get, gotta pay the CEO more. C suite gotta make that. You know, we need a right. third yacht, so Ugh, you writers it's can fucking go. fucking despicable, man. <laughs> like, things that it's impacted, like Rings of Power, the showrunners, 
are not going to be on set at this See, point. But and I, don't do it. Silver lining. Don't do, don't do it. Don't Might do it. Better. Silver lining. That show doesn't get made. <laughs> I don't know. Might make it better. I'm willing to roll the dice on season two of Rings of Power. Just see what where the cards may lay. I would love to know what it looks like if they cut the budget by half. And maybe just give that money to the people that deserve it. And don't spend yeah, it on true. whatever the fuck season one was. Uh, Fair enough. I mean, yeah. like I think there's some shows that are going currently that might be better. James Corden, late night, Saturday night, whatever oh, the fuck. I think that's probably a win that that's not existing that's right now. That's the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One other one that is uh, just fucking cursed uh, is Marvel's Blade, which... Dude. This movie ain't never coming out. <laughs> Mahershala Lee at this point is sitting at his home and like, what the hell did I sign up for? Get, what? Getting flash the treatment fuck? real bad. Bro. <laughs> he went to the set. He, he got in costume. And they're like, hey, man. Rider strike. <laughs> go, go home again. You know he punched at least one person after that. <laughs> Someone got hit in the Come on, jump. guys, let's get it. I'm so excited. What? Because after he was talking about the script being shit, and he was finally like, okay, we're ready to put this shit back together. Let's go, boys. Uh, actually, yeah. writer, I know you came here on Monday. I know you, you writer <laughs> strike. I'm uppercutting mm-hmm. the first person I see. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's not the only MCU thing. I was like, Daredevil, Born Again, they suspended production as well. Oh. Um, so a lot of these things, like, well, obviously, we don't know how long. So last, hopefully not too long. Hopefully they they make a deal that satisfies all the writers and they get paid what they what they should. I'm going to say, it's almost like writers are important to production. Mm-hmm. I know. It's crazy right? how everything shuts down when you don't have writers to write your shit. Right. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I've always thought that's interesting about writer strikes because, like, yes, you can technically replace them, but the great, the good thing is that we have some recency bias here. We know how bad it was. I think that strengthens their position of yeah. how bad it was in two thousand eight. They got some ammo, you know. They got some, some solid ground to stand on. Season one of Heroes was like twenty episodes. Season two was eight because of the writer strike. Damn! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> they cut that season because they start. It, it happened halfway through the filming of that season, so they just put out what they had, and it was despicably bad. It was terribly mm-hmm. bad because oh, Lord. it turns out you need writers to make content. Like, yeah. <laughs> so please yeah. look at this and understand that they are valuable and you have to pay them their value. <laughs> Listen, big time to get into anime. Good time to get into uh, sports. <laughs> Just get into sports. Start watching a lot of sports. That, that's sports always going. There's always something great time to get yeah. into that. Yeah, maybe just watch all the stuff that you've been queuing up on your list on all of your streaming services. Just, you know, <laughs> just start actually getting into that list and knocking stuff off. I mean, don't watch Netflix anyway, because it's always going to be one season and then gets cut anyway. So, Yeah, that's, that's valid. <laughs> that's fucking valid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the majority of the news. I don't know if anything else will come. Obviously, there's obviously some other stuff that, like, I think they've talked about, like, Ahsoka's pretty much still not, most likely won't get delayed. That stuff's yeah. all pretty, most current stuff is is going to still come out. Mm-hmm. Again, we won't feel these effects, depending on how long it is for months to years. Some Game of Thrones spinoffs were affected and stuff like that, obviously. But it sucks. It, it, it just, we'll see. We'll see if it's a long because last one was I think a hundred days. The two thousand seven, two thousand eight one lasted a hundred days. It just sucks that we have to do it. I, I'm I'm happy that we're in a place that they're unionized and they're able to do it, but I hate that they yes, have to do it in absolutely. order to get their demands met in the first place. It should have never got to this point. Um, no one yeah. wanted it to get to this point, including writers. No one wants to stop doing what they love to do. Mm-hmm. Um, they're doing right. it because they want, you know, they they want to be treated fairly, and I think that's right. That makes mm-hmm. sense. That's admirable to do that. It's an essential rebalancing, you know? Yeah. This absolutely. is a uh, pro union podcast. All right. So, <laughs> absolutely. <yeah. laughs> 100%. Jesus Christ. Yes. <laughs> Until Jeff Bezos comes at us and you know, like, oh. hey, man. Here's here's a cool. Oh yeah, if we if we get a check and yeah, we we flip it. As soon as we're, as soon as we're bought by Amazon, we will be union busters through and through. I will sell out immediately. <laughs> Honestly, I think the Amazon store workers have too much bathroom time. So. I, I don't think they deliver enough packages in a day as it is. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm sure there will be more info coming out of this. We'll see what movies it affects and what other things. Let's uh, we'll see. All right. Mm-hmm. Next quick piece of news. This kind of just came out a little bit. Uh, Mortal Kombat 2 potentially found its Johnny Cage with the boys in Lord of the Rings. Carl Urban, which that ugly ass man. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. If, I don't know if that. I don't know if that one works. No, nah. he nah, should have been fucking. Um, what's his face? Kano. Oh yeah, my god, he would have been a fin- yeah. Why would that he, works? Why would he have never been Johnny Cage? What are they thinking with this casting? I don't know, man. Yeah. Good agent or something. 
I Johnny don't know Cage if that gotta be works. sexy as hell. It gotta be pretty. If anything, it should be fucking Ryan Reynolds or some shit. Like what? Yeah, Ryan Reynolds would do it. They and yeah, he's like sarcastic enough. But Absolutely. I mean, I don't know. I guess they, you know they can't afford Ryan Reynolds anymore. He's got a lot of stuff going on with Rexham. He, he's busy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he's selling mid mobile. Yeah, yeah mid mobile. But it is interesting that they're going for like a big name because like there wasn't quite that big of a name in that first one. So it's mm-hmm. it's interesting that they're going like this. You know? Has he ever done a kung fu movie? Like a fighting movie? <laughs> no, I, I guess Dick's so. Dread. He did like a fighting movie. You got to be able to kick though. That's Johnny Cage. I was gonna say hi. Yeah, Johnny Cage. One of his yeah. signature moves is a high kick above his head. Right. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Also, I don't know if he's fit like that. Like he's not a non-fit, but I don't think mm-hmm. he's got like six pack. Like the whole thing about Johnny Cage's character is that he's supposed to be on TV. He's a TV actor, right. mm-hmm. and then also a kung fu master. So he's supposed to be ripped. Yeah. Always has a shirt off. Pretty. You know, clean faced. So if yeah. anything, I would think it'd be like, I don't know. Like, I could think of so many better people. Fucking yeah. James from Funhouse would be a better pick than Carl Urban. Chris <laughs> like, Pratt. <laughs> I would rather die mm. than put Chris Pratt. In <laughs> He's got the charisma. I he can't. No, I don't Ooh, see. I don't see it. Wait, though. Chris Evans. He plays a good. Chris dick. Evans would be. A perfect he would one. be a great Johnny Cage. Yeah. Dude, yeah. he plays a good. He asshole. would. Like he's he's yes. good. He's a villain, but he's not. I mean, he's not. Wouldn't be a villain, but he'd be you know kind of a. A douche. A douchebag. Yeah. Which he's been. And uh, Michael Sarah, uh, which we call it? Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. Yeah. Scott Pilgrim. Thank you. Um, and um, Gray Man. He was great as a villain in Gray Man. Yeah. That, was, that actually that works. That fucking works. He'd have to do it as a passion project, though. And I don't know if he loves that. <laughs> He'd never do it. He would yeah. never do it. <laughs> the money, I assure you, the money's not good enough. Carl Urban's doing it because no. he's, he's trying to have a redemption tour. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's weird. I feel like, yeah, Carl Urban seems a little too old, but I don't know. Too old. Too. He's, he's ugly. too grizzled. He's ugly. Yeah, pretty. too grizzled. He, yeah. He's pretty oh, yeah. like a, 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 a bear. Johnny Cage needs to be like a a fucking Jersey boy, yeah. like a like from the Ooh. Jersey short, like oiled and and orange. <laughs> I agree, hundred percent. Not a not a piece of hair on that man's body. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, Carl Urban definitely got a bunch of back hair. Let's be like real. Like he played like water polo in in high school or some yes, shit. I agree, hundred percent. What if they what if they just cast like Pete Davidson and he just got like super jacked? I would love to that see that work through. I would love to see him <laughs> fix his life to the point that he gets jacked. <laughs> I probably not. I, I probably hate not. I don't some think fucking Pete Davidson, but I would love to see that. <laughs> oh god, that's so funny. All right, next piece of news, but first, obviously, uh, we're talking trailers, so you know where we're going. Cue it. Mom Spaghetti. First <laughs> trailer of the week. Cigarettes and broken glass. Dune Part <laughs> Two. <laughs> this looks great. This looks this looks exciting. Oh. Um, they, they're saying that this is a war movie. Dude, I am in. God, I'm so in for this. Can't wait. Dune is such an interesting book that I'm really excited for the second half because I feel like most yeah. people only know the first half about Space Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the second mm-hmm. half is what makes Dune such a heavy hitter of a film and uh, our book, rather. And then mm-hmm. what makes it such a hard film to film because this shit goes... Mm-hmm. An interesting place that I'm excited for right. people to see. I think the the second part is going to be easier to film than the first part because the first one you got to establish a lot of stuff. You got to kind of get them into yeah. the, you know the universe. And since they did such a solid job of that and they kind of slowed it down and gave let that stuff breathe, now you're just back in it. And it's like oh fuck yeah, like I can't, <laughs> dude. I cannot wait. Like I we read, riding worms, boys. Riding, we riding worms. big old worms. <laughs> a little sad that they gave that away, but like. I mean, you kind of know he's going to make it, whatever. But like, I don't, yeah. I don't think that's the interesting part about it, though. I don't know if they're going to do a second trailer for this. I assume they probably will, because they always do. Probably. But I still don't yeah. think this tells a big portion of what the story is for this. And I love that. Oh, I have no mm-hmm. idea what the hell's going on. Yeah, yeah and I kind of <laughs> love that, because this this goes places that I don't... I think the best part about this kind of stuff is it's like Game of Thrones-esque, um, where it's like, mm-hmm. you, it's subverting expectations. And that's what I want. Right. I, I, we haven't had that in a right. while, I feel like. Yeah, I think... The one thing that I want, well, maybe I should, I don't want to spoil anything, but I, I think the Wait one down. thing I want to know what's inside what Paul is thinking in, because in the book, he's very much aware of mm-hmm. like what the path that is he's starting to get on. And I want them to relay that. And he's trying, he's trying to stop it, but like, but he kind of just kind of gets swept up. I don't know. It's, it's a cool thing in the book. You know what I want, what I want Paul to do in this second movie, fucking emote. <laughs> that's what i want from him in this movie compared character. to the first one i want him to be a person a fucking yeah. human being <laughs> and that's kind of what i feel like we were missing with the first one the first one is visually really impressive and everything like that and I think oh they did yeah a good mm-hmm. job of like setting the like devin said like setting the space 
Um, but like I said, mm. I don't know if they really met the characters. You know, of course, books are very much into the head of the character. Right. We don't get mm-hmm. that much in this in right. lieu of action yeah. instead. So I do hope they kind of go a little bit more into that, like, because he does have a, a little bit of like struggle of man in his story that I think is really important. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping they show that correctly. And it's weird because there's like a lot of factors coming in. Like, you know, there's there's he has like weird powers and his mom does too. And like, you know, so I right. hope they kind of they can get a little bit more into that in the Benny what she's called like the Benny Gesserit. Like, so I hope they kind of get, you know, explain that well, because there's a lot of stuff that you just kind of like in the book that mm-hmm. you have more time to explain than you do in a movie. So right. but I think they did a really good job building the world, world building. They stayed very true to the book in the first one. So, you know, it's like going to honor it. So I'm, I'm really glad that they did it in two parts now, now that I've had, you know, now that the dust has settled, yeah. when I was in the theater, I was like, part <laughs> one, <what the> hell? <laughs> right. But, crazy, dude, no one knew, bro. <laughs> Just no, like, what the fuck? it's what gonna the be hell? so. It's a day awesome. in that shit for three minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be sick. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty fucking stoked. We'll let's we'll see. Even just visually, it, it looks incredible. We'll see. Got new characters in there. Florence Pugh. We got a shaved headed Austin Butler looking like a real dude. Fucking lunatic. Pedro <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that's his name. We will see. All right. Last quick piece of news in the trailers. Gran Turismo, the PlayStation property turned movie. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> this shit looks sick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I thought this was the dumbest fucking idea ever when I heard about it first thing oh, announced. Absolutely. And then I saw that trailer when I was watching Guardians of the Galaxy and I was like, hold up. Based on a, it don't look that bad. Based on a true story? What's going on here? <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> <laughs> it's also got daddy I was ready in to it. go in being like, what the fuck is this fuck? What are you going to do? And I was like, oh shit. They- <laughs> and... I didn't know. I don't think I knew this. Fucking the Neil Blomkamp is the director, aka man who did District Nine and all them shits. I'm like, okay, I love District Nine. I, as, okay, because it's supposed to be the Halo movie. I love District Nine. Uh, I'm on board. Yeah, and it's based on a true story about like a there's a bunch of racers that were really good at Gran, Gran Turismo, being able to get a an opportunity to race in real life. I didn't know that Whoa. was a thing. I have to look into it to yeah. see how much of it's based in reality. But I had no idea that was right. a real thing that even existed. So that kind of like interested me. Where I was like, "Oh, I love a good documentary." <laughs> this yeah. could end up being just like a a, a good like movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love the concept too. Like that's a, that's like sets the stage for like a pretty good story. Yeah, yeah. I was that that threw me aside. If you haven't seen the trailer, Devin, definitely watch it. Uh, yeah, and I would say. Feel, but I don't. I've last Grand Tourism I played was Grand Tourism Three on PlayStation Two. I hate. Realistic racing games, I think they're really gross. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I know people are fans of them, yeah. obviously, but I was just never. I, I think yeah, last one I played was probably Grand Tourism Four. Yeah. I would imagine. Stakes felt high. There's good actors That's in cool. there. Yeah, got Orlando Bloom. Got fucking David Harbor from Stranger Things. Yeah, look at PlayStation making shit out of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Literally out of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, out of the trailer park, which means we are out of the news, boys. Shall we now move into our main topic of the week, a.k.a. Bye, Devin. We'll see you in a little bit. Yep. All right. Peace. All right, Brian. It's that time. It's time for our main topic of the week. A very highly anticipated and potentially much needed outing in this main topic. Because uh, we're, we're in the fortress of... Chris Pratt is bisexual. <laughs> 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 no, we're in Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Volume 3. Is it Volume 3? Volume 3. Third and... Final question mark outing for these uh for the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, James Gunn's I would imagine his final take with the MCU now that he is headed towards uh DC futures. Um yeah, let, let, let's get into it. Non-spoilers real quick, listeners. We'll get into spoilers in a second. Also check the time codes for all that stuff. I'll go first just because, dude, walking out <laughs> of this movie, I was faith was restored, everything was great, and I was just uh Renewed with the MCU and also thinking about the future of DC, which we'll probably talk about later with James Gunn. I think James Gunn absolutely nailed this movie. I think he knocked it out of the fucking park. I will probably talk about uh, which of the three Guardians movies are our top, but obviously I'm riding the high of this movie right now. Um, I still think so. It's it's clear. It's definitely not two. I could just say that it's definitely not two. <laughs> <laughs> Without question, <laughs> certainly not two. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, I just thought this was such an emotional roller coaster without getting into spoilers. And I think it was just such a well done outing for these characters and, and these storylines that going all the way back to the first um, Guardians movie. I will also say that for me, and I know this will be a subjective thing, and it'll definitely be a taste. I think James Gunn's 
balance of tone between the dark and the comedic is so fucking well done. I know there are some people that might think it's it's a little off balance and, and kind of jarring, but for then I think that's a definitely a valid reason. Um, I think it's just down to personal taste. And for me, I think his things, every, everything he's done from Guardians to to Suicide Squad and to Peacemaker the show, and then this, I think he's got such a good balance of tone between those two things, and he really knows how to pull emotions out uh, 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 with his writing. He's a great writer and uh, a phenomenal director, and I think, yeah, I, I absolutely fucking love this movie, and I would say probably the best MCU movie we've had of all of Phase Four. I'm trying to think. I, <laughs> well, I, mean, I think technically this is Phase Five at this point. True, true that, true that. Yeah, we're right, we're right. Phase four uh, yeah, barely counts, to be fair. Definitely better than Ant Man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh. And uh, yeah, probably also better than all of Phase four. Most of yeah, everything in Phase four. <laughs> yeah, I'm 100 percent agree with you for the most part. Yeah, I do think the f- movie definitely has its flaws. But that being said, I do think it is. Mm, I wouldn't even say it's close to being the best movie over the past couple of years. Even considering Black Panther, I think Black Panther's ending was so rough that kind of ruined. Um, a mm-hmm. lot of what would have made it probably like a gold star movie. Um, right. And I think James Gunn shows that you can have a good act four, act three in, in movies. And it really it really shows. It shows what happens when you have a strong ending to uh, really put everything together to what you already have. So that's why I was like, OK, yeah, this feels better in a lot of in a lot of ways when it comes down to it. It's almost uh, <laughs> it's such a fuck you to Marvel as a whole being such a good director <laughs> and being so good right. at casting and so good at writing and so good at all these other things to make the best movie and then fuck off right after that. It's it's, <laughs> it's like like you, you've ended a relationship with someone and then you see on Instagram, oh, I was like, damn, they life going great. <laughs> it, it, it was me. It was me that was holding them back. Right. We're, we're very much learning that Marvel was the problem and was not James Gunn. And that's crazy. That's crazy to see. Who would have thought that James Gunn getting fired for that brief period of time was the greatest gift to him. <laughs> Listen, man, white men be failing up. I don't know. They, they, it just hits different it's when a crazy. white man fails. Next thing you know, yeah. the CEO of a company. Wild. Right? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those movies where it's like humor. I, you know I have an issue with humor in Marvel movies. This is the movie where mm-hmm. it makes sense in. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, the, the needle drops make sense in this movie. Like everything just mm-hmm. makes more sense in this movie than I felt in every other movie in Marvel and just movie that I've seen recently. Where it's just like yeah. I've seen a lot of stuff where it's just like it just doesn't fit. It's just too corporate. And this feels like it still has charm to it, which is feels yeah. hard to find post pandemic, especially. And just kind of in movies in the 2020s where it's like it's just hard to find a movie that just feels genuine. And this still kind of hits that mark. And I I I personally haven't felt that in a long time. So yeah. I enjoy this a lot. Yeah, we'll get into it. I don't want to spoil anything. We'll get I would say, listeners, go see it. Go see this fucking movie. Yes. If I find time, I would definitely want to go see this. Game. If you like Marvel movies, 100% see it. If you just like movies that have humor and action and stuff like that and decent, like good CGI, see the movie. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that if you just like action movies or superhero movies in general, you'll enjoy this movie for sure. I, I think people can go in without having known everything else from this weird mm-hmm. world, you know? Yeah, I agree. I would also say, uh, maybe don't take your very young kids. This movie's pretty fucking dark, uh, I will say. And they get one F-bomb, baby. Hey, yep, we'll talk about it. We get the MCU's first F-bomb in the movie. It's great. It's great. Yeah, all right. So now, listeners, let's get into spoilers. I just want to continue this conversation with these overall thoughts. I loved and applauded this movie, the, the fact that James Gunn found a way to make this movie incredibly emotional and have such high stakes without killing any character. I was genuinely surprised. <laughs> and they literally put points in where you thought the character was going to die. And I kept, because I was expecting a character to die in yeah. this movie, 100%. And I was like, who's going to be it? I knew it was going to be Rocket based on just what the movie, that the trailers kind of showed. I was like, okay, that's too mm-hmm. much to, to just go ahead and murk him at that point. Um, we found out very early it wasn't going to be Chris Pratt because we found out that that was a red herring with him just being drunk as shit when they were carrying him out of the whatever right. yeah. the trailer yep. scene. Um, and then I was like, maybe it's Nebula. Maybe maybe it's Drax. Uh, maybe it's Gamora. I don't know. Again. It was, <laughs> it's so much. Christ sake, Groot was ahead at one point. I was like, maybe it's Groot. <laughs> I thought it was Groot. And then he just was just spidering around. I was like, okay, maybe not. Uh, yeah, there's so many things. I was like, damn, like I, they really made me feel shit. And like nobody, yeah, man. nobody died. But I still felt content with an ending. You know what I mean? Absolutely. We've definitely felt situations where movies are like someone has to die. Like it, ha- it only makes sense for someone to cease to right. exist. For this plot point to make sense. I wasn't mad. I wasn't mad that no one died. Me either. And usually it's like I'm I'm on that side where it's like, 
ah, oh, I would have added a little more if someone did die. But this one, I was like, I'm so happy they're all alive. <laughs> I'm so happy you know, one died. <laughs> this was just so good. And like, I love that because I, I do, yeah, I love the idea that you feel the weight of all these choices and decisions and, and there are still consequences without being the, the life changing, the su- ultimate definitive consequence of, of death, you know? For sure. With that, let's, let's kind of go with some characters. Let's talk about, let's just start with the, the centerpiece of this movie, a okay? Rocket. Or shall we say uh, Rocket Raccoon now, oh. officially, which I fucking loved. <laughs> He's not a fucking raccoon. I found out that he actually is. We already knew, oh. of course, because we're humans and right. exist on Earth. But <laughs> <laughs> Right. How did you feel that Rocket was basically out of commission the whole movie? I'm a little hit or miss with it. So I do mm-hmm. think it was an important like story. Pe- I mean, the whole movie is kind of a side quest again which I thought I was going right. to have issues with, but I ended up being okay with business based on what I know from this kind of phase of Marvel movies so far anyway, that I knew this was going to mm-hmm. be pretty self-contained. I also know James Gunn hates what's happened in the world outside of Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. Uh, <laughs> so that makes me feel a little bit better about it. So him being on a commission was fine because it did tell a really good story about like, yeah, we, he, you know, we knew he had trauma and we knew he had issues and we knew he didn't talk mm-hmm. about it. Um, and we found a lot about, you know, uh, Peter Quill. We found a lot about Mantis in the second movie. We found a lot about all these characters, even Gamora and uh, Avengers. Yeah. We found a lot about these backstories of these characters, even Drax in the first movie, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but we hadn't gotten much about Rocket yet. So I felt like it was due time that we got to find out kind of what he was going through and how he came to yeah. be the character that he is now. And I thought it was super interesting. It was furry as fuck. Uh, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> this whole movie was <laughs> the furries love this one that shit hit for the furries uh, <laughs> but yeah I do think it was a really interesting thing it reminded me of a lot of like tropes of like old stuff I used to like as a kid a whole lot which kind of hit me in a different way than I expected like I don't know if you ever heard of the game uh, MDK but it was kind of like a, it was like a science experiment gone wrong for these characters uh-huh. and it turns into basically a bunch of animals with guns right, and I was like holy right. shit like that's crazy <laughs> yeah so seeing him to be out of commission was like it was fine I mean he's not my favorite character um, but I do mm. think he still has a special place in my heart um, so to see him struggling and to see Quill struggle a whole lot and to see Drax and Manus get so much play I think because yeah. Rocket Raccoon was kind of like outside of Groot was like the like punchliner yeah. like if it was going right, to make a joke right. it was going to be that character uh, so to give that realm, like that, the helm to other characters was a great idea. I think it was a good thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I loved all the flashbacks. Obviously, they those were like the big emotional gut punches of of the movie of all of from everything from Baby Rocket and fucking Lila and Teeth and Floor. <laughs> I had no idea this was gonna be trauma porn for animals. Uh, oh had I known that, I would have come in with a different perspective completely. Also, oh. the name Floor is so funny to me. Because uh, I, I've worked at many companies in my life. Um, some do have offshore agents that do work as well. Uh-huh. And it's really funny to see like people that like English is their second language. And they're trying to like acclimate to uh, right. a native, like an English speaking country. A lot of people don't understand nomenclature of America. So mm-hmm. like a lot of people from like the Philippines or things like that, like just choose names based on things that they enjoyed. So they're like, my name's Lamp. Uh, because right. I've seen a lamp. It's nice. Right. It's really pretty. My name is Lamp. And Interesting. it's like, it's really weird to tell someone like, we don't name people Lamp. Right. Right. <laughs> <In America>. right. <laughs> but I also get why you would enjoy that name. Cause like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when oh, she was like, so Floor, funny. I was like, yeah. Floor. Floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shout out to Floor and Teeth. Oh. I didn't know that Linda Cardellini, who plays uh, Hawkeye's wife, was the voice of Lila. <laughs> I had no clue. I was like, oh shit, that's so funny. But dude, like, this is where. I I say my thoughts for for spoilers was I'm not gonna lie I think I cried more in this than I did in Black Panther. <laughs> it was it was hard to keep the tears in. I'm not gonna lie. I was uh, something about animals getting hurt. Just really it was it really hits different. so nuts. I couldn't <laughs> like I actually like I got teary eyed in Black Panther. I legit had tears running down my face. And that final scene with Rocket when he's making the escape and Lila gets murked and then Floor and Teeth. I was like. Oh my! Now, what I, are we? Oh, I will say, Florentine didn't make much sense to me. Straight bullets just don't be that fucking accurate. It just murder everybody else <laughs> in the fucking room. For her to die made sense. For them to maybe try right. to protect him, it would have made more sense. But for them to just be like, oh, right, we actually hit them too. Yeah. <laughs> Do you just really want to oh. rip out my heart? Just fucking smash it. It just was. It, it. it worked. It, yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it was such a 
And then just Rocket's rage of, of taking, scratching the shit out of the High Evolutionary, who we'll talk about in a bit. All that was just such a well done emotional payoff of, of all these flashbacks. Like, cause you, like in the trailer, you see them all. And I definitely saw the moment uh, in the movie as I'm watching it from the trailer where, where Rocket hugs Lila. And in my, in my thought in the trailer, I was like, oh, they're going to reunite in this movie. And so when that moment happened in the flashback, I was like, oh no, <laughs> this isn't the f- this isn't present day. Oh no, oh no. Oh yeah, I just, I thought all of his origin all the way to, to him, yeah, Baby Rocket obviously, and then him being so intelligent and, and his issues with the high evolutionary and, and all that, I think was so incredibly well done. And it also helps with moments in between the flashbacks and and after Rocket finally is back um, of the Guardians like reading they're basically reading these flashbacks and like holy shit no wonder he didn't want to tell us any of this <laughs> stuff and like even Nebula's like this is worse than what Thanos did to me and it's like that's a pie ball <laughs> oh my god <laughs> we saw what Thanos did holy shit yeah <laughs> yeah and so just Rocket being the center of this is, is such a smart move and so well done Shout out to Bradley Cooper. Like, we forget that that's fucking Bradley Cooper doing the voice of, of Rocket. And this I think whole that's time. kind of the strongest part of this kind of movie is it's like, I never knew Bradley Cooper was a good voice actor. I never imagined actors to be good voice actors. So to see them right. do like things like this, where it's like, he does so well that I don't even recognize it as Bradley Cooper. No. It's incredible. Like, that's really great. Absolutely. It's kind of nuts. It's wild. Yeah. And, and so uh, the other, the, just the emotions kept rolling the moment that, uh, Rocket gets back on the on the comms and you see Nebula and Drax and Mantis all react to him being back alive. And it's just like, oh, it's just so well done. I would just go. I would pay just to see that whole sequence again. <laughs> it feels so good. So many things in this it movie does. just feel so good. I don't know that you can cheapen that for anybody. Yeah, absolutely. I did laugh a little bit. I was invested, but it, 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 everything... If you go to heaven and it's just a white hallway, I'm going to think about Harry Potter. So I was just like... We all just go to Harry Potter heaven. <laughs> that was probably the laziest part of the movie. It would just be like, yeah, you know, <laughs> liminal space. You you go back to the office when you die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, my, my at least for me, my last couple of Rocket highlights are obviously the moment he finds out he's a raccoon and he's trying to save all of the baby raccoons <laughs> and he's just scooping them all up. I was like, oh, no. I really felt really bad because I was like, he's really going to take the raccoons and no other animal. And, and I was I, I, oh. so fucked if they just do that and allow that to be a thing. So I'm so glad they didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was just phenomenal. Um, With that, let, let's let's segue to the high evolutionary. Dude, MCU has been doing decent with the villains like he i thought he was scary he's evil as fuck like if you if there's a villain to hate it was this motherfucker <laughs> i mean i think it was brilliant i think it's it's obviously a trope that has existed with the maniac that yes. just goes crazy and then you know wants to play god things like that not unseen before we've seen it before but it is mm-hmm. really well done i think they really fleshed it out well enough to me to believe it and also like you know feel feelings for him as well as a character i think that's the most important yeah. thing about a villain is the fact that you can maybe commiserate with him a little bit i hate when it's just like i want to destroy the world because i hate right. the end he's got a complex he has a yeah. complex that he wants to create and then making him black i thought was an interesting uh aspect as well where it's like they don't have to do that mm-hmm. but to want perfection right. and not to want you know like they talked about like chris pratt at one point peter quill says like uh, this is a perfect world where there's a you know a walrus dealing meth to a right. fucking octopus <laughs> head, like, and he was yeah. like, no, and it's like he would know as a black man from Earth that yeah, that shit's fucking crazy. Like that's wild. Which is the thing, like they never say it, but I do wonder: is he a human? Do you think High Evolutionary was is a human man that came from Earth? That is know? interesting, based on the Guardians of the Galaxy lore. I don't know, right? Because there's so many humanoid looking figures that don't come from Earth. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but that who man, knows? he had a good enough fate for me to think that he came from Earth. Who <laughs> else is gonna cut his hair like that? Let's be real. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to fucking Chuck Woody who played uh plays the High Evolutionary. He's he's phenomenal in this. If you haven't seen Peacemaker, the show, anyone, listeners, he's phenomenal. And that's, that's where I think him and James Lane first connected and brought him to this. He's phenomenal. He's a great actor. Yeah, he's awesome in this. Yeah, and just, like, he's he's scary yeah. at, as well at times. Like, when he's just screaming and he's he's freaking out as to why Rocket, how did you do this? How are you in, How are you smarter than me, your maker? <laughs> yeah, I, I love the idea of genius and madness, the two sides of the same coin. Because he really yes. showed that very flawlessly of just, like, yeah, this man is fucking nuts. Like he's yeah. smart. He's made weird ass furry animals uh, and made a whole earth for them. But also 
Man's fucking crazy. <laughs> it's crazy to the point where he'll just blow that shit up on a dime, killing <laughs> thousands of fucking people, animal people. <laughs> Solely because he just it didn't work. It wasn't for him. He didn't like it. Oh, that was that was crazy. That, there's a lot of death in the movie in the background or even, and, or even in the fr- foreground. This <laughs> is dark. This is a dark ass yes. movie to have so it many really funny is. moments. This is really dark. There's a lot of times yes. I was like, holy fuck. This is PG-13? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, shit was nuts. All right, since we're here, let's talk about the other sort of villain of the movie, Adam Warlock. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Warlock. How how'd you feel about Adam Warlock? I love Will Poulter, and I want to see him in more things, and I'm hoping this is a segue for him, because I think he's a phenomenal actor. I think he is yeah. very uh, underrated when it comes to his ability, and I just want to see him in more things. I think he was underutilized in this movie real bad. Um, mm-hmm. I understand the jokes, and I understand making him what he was. I understand trying to bring the Sovereign back in there, because no one really cares about the second movie, so we want to try our best to yeah. kind of, you know, <laughs> curtsy that in. We gotta connect the dots. Yeah, I did not care about his character. I did not care about his mom. I did not care about his stupid pet. <laughs> yeah. I loved him when he was in there. I wish he was in there more. Like, <laughs> I will say, I loved how he just, the opening is, within five minutes of the movie, he's there kicking it. I'm like, oh, shit. We are just getting straight to it. That was nuts. Yeah, I really expected a different like storyline because of what happened yes. in that beginning. I was like, oh, okay, so this is about him being the villain until he's not. Right. And then it was kind of like, oh, this is hardly that. Okay, that's fun. Um, yeah. Also, those close-in shots of his face with like the wide cam, like the fish lens, fish eye lens. <laughs> I, I don't yeah, know why, yeah. but that just hits so good. It's just so fucking <laughs> funny, just as close in on his face. I, I definitely, <laughs> I'm on the fence. I, I liked it. In parts, and but at the other side, I understand if people want the more comic accurate, more Jesus stoic Adam Warlock, which I definitely could see them going towards mm, in the sure. future. Obviously, this is like they've established he's basically five years old in this. Uh, <laughs> and I did think some of the jokes were funny, particularly the one where there's she, uh, Elizabeth Debicki's mom's character. She's like, make him make him talk to us, and he just incinerates <laughs> him <laughs> and kills him. <laughs> What's a better lesson than this? <laughs> no, the, like, the jokes were funny. But it's just like, I just felt like it was such a waste of character noise to character that will exist again. Because it just felt like Thor yeah. again. You know what I mean? A little bit. Yeah. yeah especially yeah, since yeah. Thor is such a comedic character now. We're just like, okay. We got a, we got an oaf of a god that exists mm. that is just being oafy and godlike. Like It did feel like you could probably rip him out of the majority of this movie and things will kind of roughly say the same. You could, re- you could replace pits and pieces that he's there for and everything. For sure. But... I'm excited to see what he does in the future, though. For I will sure. say that. Absolutely. You know? I also like how there was so much talk about him getting so jacked, and he uh, barely shirtless in this movie. <laughs> he was shirtless for five minutes, <laughs> and so, he passed out immediately. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was funny. All right. Let's talk about these Guardians. I'm not going to lie, man. Peter Quill. Chris Pratt's good as his character. He's good in this fucking movie. All of his politics aside and his outside <laughs> real human life shit, He's a good actor, and he's good as this character. <laughs> I, I hate me a Chris Pratt, but I do think he does phenomenal in this role. Um, and I think that he was the perfect he was the perfect person for this role. I don't know who yeah. I would replace him with um, had I had my own casting, you know, whatever. Right. He, he does great. I think uh, he's really felt the emotions of this character. I really wasn't sure I was going to be sold on the Gamora, Peter Quill stuff now that Gamora is not Gamora that we know and love. Mm-hmm. Um, it was still, it still felt good. It felt yeah. Right. And props to them for not putting them back together at the end. Yes. Like like there's still consequences to that. It wasn't a fairy tale ending. It was like there's still there's still some sadness with this, you know? Yeah. They just some bros. They they probably dapped it up at the end. That's pretty- yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think he he this is the biggest emotional arc for his character and I really appreciate all that stuff. Like all the the metaphors with the lily pads and he's learning how to swim and all that shit and like I think it really works in this movie. Far more than than all of the other two movies. Um, uh, it's the, it's the, probably the least tropey that I've seen this storyline be, where it's like it's not so much about like finding the damsel in distress or like trying to to find the girl. It's more about like self healing, which I feel like we don't get enough of in movies. Where it's like it's not so much about finding someone to be with. It's about healing yourself and the trauma that you've been through. And this is a movie yeah. about everyone's trauma. Everyone's going through shit that they've been through and they don't know how to really handle it. And everyone's going through it in a different time frame in a different way. And for him, it was yeah. like, I need to stop running and I need to kind of assess what I've been through in my life and figure out what what I want to do with my life. So I thought that, was, that was good. Like, that's crazy and movie wise. Like, we don't see that very often. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I do love like like obviously everyone still gets their moments to be funny and, and, yeah. and charming. Like, I do love how 
he's trying to charm a homegirl at the fucking <laughs> uh, brain desk, whatever. And then at the end, he does. He's like, he's like, I, I want to tell them all how I feel. And then she's like, All right, go. And he's like, I'm not that stupid. I'm not gonna tell them. I'm just trying to hack it. And I'm like, he still got it. <laughs> I told you she was into me. <laughs> yeah, all that was still great. And then obviously you mentioned it. Let's talk about it. He gets to drop the first MCU f bomb, which I thought was so funny. <laughs> It is in such a random place that literally did it not is. need to exist at all. No. But they just wanted to tell a joke and they knew they had the F bomb. They knew they had one. They had one in the chamber yeah. that they could sell before it became rated R. And they're like, yep, let's do it right here. It's just a fucking <laughs> open the fucking door. <laughs> like press, it looks like, oh, it looks like you're pressing the keyhole. <laughs> What's next? Yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's one of the more successful ones because like there's movies where it's a PG-13, but they get one F-bomb and they use it. And I think one of the one of the other great ones is in um, I think uh, X-Men First Class. It's when uh, fucking Young Magneto and Xavier go to see Wolverine at a bar and they're trying to like recruit mutants. And they just go to him and they just say their names and he just goes, go fuck yourself. And that's the end of the scene. I think that one is phenomenal. And there are other ones that are just not good where it's like they create this big like kind of try to be like melodramatic moment out of it and it doesn't quite work whereas this one because i think like you were saying it's so randomly <laughs> dropped in where it doesn't need to be it just kind of worked <laughs> <laughs> so wow it's funny because i feel like x-men first class wasn't even in the actual movie was that in the, the med credits no i think it was in the movie was it in the movie it, it might have been the very the end i think so yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> but oh yeah so good so good you brought up gamora and and since we're talking about peter let's talk about gamora um one thing she got some real greasy looking ass Ooh. hair in this movie <laughs> And I guess that was kind of like to be like, okay, we know it's a different Gamora because she's dirty. Yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. dirty. We don't like her. She is dirty. It's like, damn, girl. She got almost... greasy ass hair. She doesn't wash her hands after she pees. <laughs> that shit was almost dreads. Like, I know you're nasty. Because I know she's not white, but she gives off white vibes. And that's white lady energy to have that greasy ass hair. Let's be real. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, I, I loved kind of going back to this old school even kind of slightly different from the Guardians 1 Gamora where she just fucking hates everyone and everything, doesn't give a shit, just wants to kill everyone. I was <laughs> nervous so at funny. first that she was going to be a little too one note and they were going to try uh -huh. to give her a redemption arc. Um, but I do love mm -hmm. that she still like had a really strong connection to the Ravagers for one. Um, I thought that was really yes. interesting. And then that like became a thing through her entire arc where it's like, yeah, I'm going back to the Ravagers. Those are my people. It's my family. Right. And then seeing them also be humans um, and be like, Wait, humans quote unquote but be like people and be right. like yeah we, we love her that's our girl um, so they're all that's hugging her. her and shit and it's like okay they're not just crazy monsters that are also pirates they're also like exactly. they're people that have a home She's and this got is a what home. they yeah they, they love each other absolutely I thought that was a good moment for her as well um, and just also yeah. yeah like seeing her character arc, whereas like you said it wasn't just a straight like oh I love Peter Quill because I saw him be a cool guy um, that's usually right. what happens they were like yeah I yeah, saw exactly. him and he does do cool things um, so I don't hate him I don't love him. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't fucking, love, yeah. why would I love, I've only known him for a couple days. Like, it's been 48 hours. Yeah. <laughs> this whole movie's taking place. I don't love this man. Uh, right. <laughs> I'll deal with him. Like, okay. But I do love at the end, she, uh, when they leave, she's like, we had, I bet we had fun, didn't we? Or like, like, and he's like, yeah, we did. And that was it. And that, that's the last moment they get. She goes back to fucking Sylvester Stallone and the Ravagers <laughs> and all them and, and bros up with them. <laughs> and yeah, I think, uh, if this is the last time we see Zoe Saldana's character, I'm gonna miss her. I, I really liked it. I really like Gamora. And this is the back to the first movie where it really showed why she is notoriously the most dangerous woman in the universe. Like she <laughs> kicks the she's shit like, out of people. She's scary. She is Thanos's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> My God. It gave me the like, the Boca Tan vibes from when we we're uh, doing Mandalorian. Where we we're just yeah. like, okay, she's the capable one. <laughs> she, doesn't, she doesn't play games, but yeah, for sure. No, I mean. I, I think Zoe did really well just as a whole. And I think she even did better in this role because of how she got to have to play like a more intense character mm -hmm. and still sell yeah. it as like, this is why I'm the way that I am. Like she sold her trauma in a world where Thanos doesn't even exist anymore in two and a half hours. Like, right. She didn't, Absolutely. she didn't have the three movies that Peter Quill had. She was basically doing it yeah. as a new character almost. Absolutely. Yeah. And I still felt yeah. it as strongly as I think I would have otherwise. And that's that goes to I think both uh, props to her and James Gunn's writing. Yeah, like this just it's all just such so well done. We got to talk about my favorite duo of Drax and Mantis, <laughs> <laughs> or as I would like to now them be addressed by uh, Bug and Doofus, the new <laughs> sitcom coming to Disney Plus. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you didn't watch the holiday special, uh, they definitely get their uh, flowers. In yeah, that, and I think that really sets this up really well. 
to know how they are as characters. I know the second movie had it, but it wasn't nearly like it is in that no. and also this movie. Absolutely. Yeah, I love the pair of them. I love focusing on Drax first. I love that Drax gets to kick ass in this movie again. I've always complained. I was like, he's called Drax the Destroyer. Let him kick some ass, he man. Destroys and he destroys nothing. he finally gets to. <laughs> For the longest time. <laughs> For the longest time, dude. And yes, uh, everything he gets, he finally gets to do some stuff. He's still fucking funny as shit. I love it. David Batista is so good as, as this character, man. Man, has so many one-liners. Just so much. He, they, all of his script was probably just jokes. I don't know if that man barely had any I, serious <laughs> lines at the moment. And it's like, I, I don't hate it by any means. Uh, I think if any yeah. other movie tried to do that, it would not succeed. Uh, so it's funny that this right. landed as well as it did, just based on it. I really loved his couch bit when he's visiting the, the furry house <laughs> and he just constantly wants to lay on the couch. Drax, I can see you trying to lay down. This is what it's made for. <laughs> it's like things can be multi purpose. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was so good. One of the more emotional moments in that kind of rocket coming back sequence um, that really hit me as well was when, because the whole time Nebula is fucking getting sick and tired of, of the two of them just being such fucking idiots the whole time. And they had this big blowout and Mantis finally stands up to her and she yells at Nebula for yelling at Drax and calling him dumb. And she says the thing of, he's the only one of you that doesn't hate himself. Let him be him. I was like, oh, oh, that's real. That's real hard. That's the, that's some tough shit right there. <laughs> she mel- she may tell a joke, but she'll never tell a lie. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> and then the moment where she tells Dr- Drax, asks her, you think I'm an idiot? And she just goes, forget. And she makes him forget all of that, what she heard. I was like, oh, that, made that just broke sad. my heart yeah. a little bit, man. Because <laughs> he was hurt when she said that. Because he doesn't think he's an idiot, obviously. Like, Right. Oh, <laughs> it's so, oh, that, that moment really got me. It was really well done between, and like, oh, that's what thing is like, all of these characters get, little bits to shine throughout this fucking movie because there's like 12 characters to get through in this fucking movie it's crazy how the well they do so easy to leave so many behind and they they don't seem to no we'll talk about one that in my mind is sort of left behind a little bit but we'll get to it in a second but a couple more uh funny drax bits for me was when he goes up they first find the children and he goes hello dumb idiots (laughs) (laughs) i'm just like oh my god talking to children only uh, yeah That, I love his recurring joke of uh, when every time Peter or anyone says Rocket's his best friend and Drax goes second best friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so, it's so, uh, it's so quick and it's so stoic that just makes it yes. so funny. Like, it's, it it's the works. fact that he's just, he believes everything he says is so good. And then Mantis, uh, yeah, she gets her moments too. She gets to conquer those two, those big, those are three uh, big tentacle beast things. No, I later. don't love that so much. That felt a little like, so there's parts of this movie. So I'm going to tell you as a whole, um, I do like yeah. this movie. I think pacing is pretty good for the most part. I do think it's a little too long. We've talked about this for a couple of Marvel movies at this point. I think if we could have shaved maybe 20 minutes off, we'd be a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Having that whole jump scare of like, oh no, what are we going to do? And then she's like, actually, they don't eat people. Like, okay. Right, All right. right. Fucking, <laughs> of course, we're going to go this way. That's where fair. It's not actually a real That's shit. Fair. Like there was no use for this in my life. You just could have escaped yeah. from any other position. And I wanted more, but she, they, like you said, they had to give her a moment. Um, mm-hmm. I do like that she got to, you know, exist and be like, oh, well, she's so sweet. So that's how she exists. But right, I did. Right. It felt a little cheap. That was the one moment that felt pretty cheap. That's fair. Me. That's fair. I think I was still riding the emotional high. Yeah. So I just like, <laughs> it yeah. just washed over me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her go. She loves everything. That and I love her uh, telling Cosmo when Cosmo was trying to hold the telekinetic bridge up. She's like, you're strong. You can do this. I was like. Man, Mantis is like the best life coach ever, dude. <laughs> I'm telling you, there, there is a character in a, a Star Wars video game that she has a, a skill called battle meditation. Everyone thinks it's stupid because it's like, well, she can't, you know, force choke nobody, no, can't kill nobody. Uh-huh. But she can turn the tides of a war just by giving people confidence. Um, yeah. And that's really important when it comes down to yeah. whether or not you survive in war. God, I love me some buffs. <laughs> give, me, yeah. oh, give me all the buffs. She's just the bard <laughs> giving you fucking buffs. Like, that's important. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I will say one thing, because um, me and you have both seen the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, which we're also spoiling in this because listeners, just in case you haven't watched it, the biggest thing that came out of that was that um, Mantis and Peter are siblings, which they do say in this movie, so it's not really a spoiler. But they, I kind of expected them to do a little more with that in this movie, considering they made it such a big deal. But other than that line, they 
nothing ever really comes up of it ever again. <laughs> we, we, say, we we name drop ego once, and then yeah, it was it. yeah. Oh. I was like, oh, okay. I guess that all right. I figured that was a pretty significant <laughs> plot point for the third movie based on the holiday special, but it was not right. But it was not. Yeah. All right. Like I was saying, I, let's talk about the one character that definitely has moments to shine, but I thought mostly just because I missed them. I wish they were in it a little more is Groot. I never really know how I feel about Groot. <laughs> I, 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 I learned that Vin Diesel made millions of dollars from this shit, which is wild. And, uh, yeah. you know, said Groot, I am Groot thousands of times, which is crazy. I don't know if he deserves all those millions of dollars, but, you know, that's not, that's not my place to, to say. Um, I don't know. It feels awful only because we got the I am Groot, like, little shorts and got to see him mm-hmm. have his own little rump and roll as a main character right. that kind of makes me feel weird. But honestly, That's, yeah. he's another character that like, if he didn't exist, I don't know that I'd be that sad. Oh. <laughs> Especially that he's chunky Groot now. I really hate chunky Groot. I can't stand. Uh, so you don't like swole Groot? I can't stand a muscular Groot. <laughs> he, that man took some steroids of some sort and I don't, I don't fuck with him. He's on, he's, yeah, he's on a new level. <laughs> um, well, for one thing, I feel like he doesn't say I am Groot for like the first 30 minutes of this movie. Yeah. I was like, did they not want to pay Vin Diesel more money or, or like what's going on here? He ain't saying shit. Um, but I will say he gets great moments. Like the moment he flies, I was like, yo, Groot, Groot got some shit up his sleeve, dude. Holy shit. That man's Inspector Gadget over here. <laughs> yeah. Like we we're saying, he's a spider head at one point. He gets fully blown up and just grows back in like hours, minutes. I don't know. Um, he turns into a weird kaiju Groot at one yeah, point yeah. in this movie. He, he does some pretty cool stuff. And that's why I was like, I didn't miss him because he did a lot of cool stuff. I mean, his whole bit with Gamora of like, y'all can understand him. And he's like, I'm Groot. And everyone's oh, like, yeah. yeah, you know, this and this and this and this. He's like, well, yes. Girl, what? <laughs> he didn't say anything. Right. Yeah. I thought that was Which, good. I'll ask you this first before we talk about it. How did you feel about him at the end saying, I love you guys? I thought that was really shitty. <laughs> I, I was confused on whether or not it was supposed to be that he now knows words or that now us as an audience understand him because we spent so much time with him. That's what I'm on. It gave yeah. me the same vibes as, as Pikachu and Pokemon in the Pokemon movie where, she, <laughs> where Pikachu starts saying words um, because Ash is knocked out and now same yeah. shit. Where it's like, I'm never yeah. in the Pokeball because I love you. That was really jarring right. and I hated it. And so the same way where I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Also, that's fair. That sounded the most like Vin Diesel of everything he's ever said. <laughs> I was like, that is literally just Vin Diesel. Like, I am Groot. Never Vin felt Diesel's like Vin voice. Diesel, but that was just Vin Diesel telling me, "I love you guys, <laughs> family." And I'm like, he I said got my family. Corona out. I'm like, <laughs> he hell yeah, bro. <laughs> cheers to that. Let's go. <laughs> cheers to that, Groot, Vin Diesel, <laughs> Dominic. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know who you are right now. They're all the same person. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, I definitely like to think of it that. We we as the audience have finally can understand what Groot says now. I kind of love that. That was thinking about it, but it was definitely up. like, oh, oh shit. No, <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was corny and jarring. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really talk about Nebula. I mean, she's got she's great in this movie. I think she's got a lot to do. Her arm is dope as hell. I do wonder, is that like a modification of Bucky's arm? Because we know Rocket gave her Bucky's arm right. at the end of that holiday special. I wonder if that's what that is yeah. and they just fucked around with it it's, it's like it just turned to like basically anything that she needs yeah uh, i thought that was pretty cool it's pretty dope but it seemed like OP. It, it was pretty yeah she's really overpowered that's why i had to take her out in the beginning when they're like you can't come in yeah <laughs> I'm like, okay i get it we, we have a story we have a story beat we got to get to that yeah. she can't exist in because she'll be too strong we got to make it stupid the same way they had adam war like running in the, the end where it's like he wouldn't run. Right, like, right. Yeah. We know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love her. I don't know why I just love stupid stoic characters being having feelings like begrudgingly. Yeah. It was very Knuckles of Sonic uh, kind of. Yeah. Feel to it, where it's like, you know, I'm, I'm really like I'm not into this kind of shit, but also I'm pretty stupid because I haven't experienced the world or love before. Right. But yeah, she has some great moments uh, mm. <laughs> when it comes to humor. She's like just the one that's sick of everyone's shit and just like, oh my God, I'm surrounded by morons. <laughs> Most of the movie, she's babysitting. Like, yeah. She's the she's the Hermione Granger of a lot of the movie outside of Gamora, where it's like, I'm the only reason we have not died yet. Right. <laughs> but she also has like, she's obviously invested in these people and these people are her family. She has that line where Gamora's like, why do you care about this raccoon, blah, blah, blah. I'm your actual sister and she just says, he's family. He's family too. And it's like Nebula, it loves these people as well. And I kind of love that, you know? It, it gives me huge uh, Vegeta vibes as being like a huge villain that like right, hurt your right. people and stuff. And then it's like they become like one of your best friends. And he'll always, he'll never say it like, you know, outright. Right. Like that, uh, <laughs> but he'll always like, you, you know, it's true. It's like, yeah, like 
Nebula loves these people. Mm-hmm. Like she doesn't love to say it. No. But this is her people. Yeah, she'll stick by them. Absolutely. <laughs> How did you feel about the side plot with Kraglin and, and Cosmo, the whole bad dog bit? <laughs> it was one of those things where it's like, it was cute. It was really yeah, cute. Yeah. I love Cosmo. Every time Cosmo I exists, love I, Cosmo. I, I, I love Cosmo so much. Uh, I can never really get down on what they're trying to do with her voice. Like, I feel like they try to make her more Asian in the beginning, then they made her more Soviet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in this one, that was kind of confusing. Where I was like, I felt like I, I always assumed she was an Asian, uh, Asian woman. Uh, <laughs> no, pretty sure she's she Russian woman. No, now she's Russian as hell. Uh, <laughs> but the, the bad dog, good dog. It was it was good to break up the tension. Yes, absolutely. It didn't feel too forced. No, yeah, I thought it was good with and then with Kraglin learning to to control the arrow. I do I do love when we still get a little Michael Mike, Michael Rooker Yandu cameo for a brief moment, one last time, to give Kraglin some confidence to use the arrow. Yeah, I mean, that was the, going back to the everyone gets a little bit. They all get a little piece of the pie and get to yeah. show off their skills. They definitely wanted to round out everything in this movie. And I really appreciate that. Because yeah. it's like, I mean, I wouldn't have missed not having any of that in it. Right. But I appreciate that it was put in there. Exactly. It's like, yeah, I mean, he struggled. He had trauma too. Everyone had trauma in this movie. Yeah. That need to be, you know, everyone was fun. Tied up. And it's for him to be like, okay, like this guy was kind of had me having inferiority complex. And now I have found my way mm-hmm. of my own. Uh, that being said, his Guardians of the Galaxy outfit is incredibly ill-fitting. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, it's shaped like the letter B. <laughs> Lowercase. <laughs> Those are kind of all the main characters. Any other like last little like sequences, we got to talk about the, once again, Chris Pratt and Beastie Boys getting some play this year from Mario to this. I Yo. hate that it was two no sleep till Brooklyn in one year, Yo. bro. That pisses me off so bad. What happened? Uh, how does that? That always happens. Though. I always feel like I there's at least know. two movies that have the exact same needle drop every single time we see two black blockbuster movies come out. It's so, so it's weird. Like, I know they're not doing it on purpose, but are they just hiring the same person to like? I don't know. Show these out. I have no What's idea. Going on? It's so weird. It's so weird. I will say though. That sequence was phenomenal. The one shot of of all the guardians in that hallway was phenomenal. And that's what I mean about like last act. It's just like if this was a Black Panther movie, this was gonna suck. But right. that was the that was a really interesting point that happened so late in the movie that I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if it was just one person shooting some people and then maybe a blue beam and a green beam. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. any other Marvel movie, that would have been what happened. Yeah. So like to see something like that at the very end of a movie where yes. like you're probably running out of budget. That was really great. I mm. really enjoyed that a whole lot. And that's what makes this movie so much higher yeah. than what I've seen in the last couple of years when it comes to Marvel. I do wonder if that's like a, if that is just like a James Gunn knows how to manage his budget or his effects. Cause like, I love how much practical stuff is in this movie. It all looks, all yeah. the furry shit, all the animal people, all the colors and everything. I think all, but he also knows when to use CGI well. And I will say it, this movie, from what I can remember, there's not a really horrible effect in this movie at all. No. I think everything's great. This movie looked great. If anything, the worst thing was once again the frozen scene of them getting of him getting frozen, where it's like, Ugh, oh yeah, I don't love yeah, that. But, yeah. You know, we've seen it in Star Wars, we've seen it in this, uh, in one of the older movies, it's whatever. Yeah. Uh, but outside of that, like, I mean, and that's it's hard to make that happen, no right. matter what. Mm-hmm. I think this movie looked phenomenal. Yeah. I think this is one of the few movies like the CGI was used really well. Um, there was good lighting. There was good different backdrops that I saw. Like I mm-hmm. saw backdrops that are pure white and so clean yeah. and then gooey shit and stuff like that. And then we had, you know, crazy like metropolis city and stuff like like that doesn't really seem to happen that much mm-hmm. anymore. So to see that you so effectively was like, y'all finally understand what made the movies good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't absolutely. know why it took so long to remember. <laughs> it, yeah. I don't know, man, but I'm glad they worked out for this movie. I So I just had a thought. I will say one of the effects that did was like a fine effect was uh the the some of the hell spawn and like the big war pig thing i was like that's oh yeah it's so quick off screen that it's gone but it, it is like a, eh, that was a little bit fine whatever <laughs> that was the most that reminded me of mdk that was like that is literally a character straight, <laughs> straight from a video game that i've played before whereas like there was just a pig on some fucking robo yeah <laughs> it looked like a fucking ninja turtle villain <laughs> I, i've definitely seen this before you know yeah yeah, yeah. It was funny that she had like a crazy ass voice though. Which is like, um, we're trying to kill these guys right yeah. now. And it's like, that is my nightmare. <laughs> Why does it sound like that? <laughs> yeah. I will say one other thing, because obviously there's a big element of, of saving the animals and saving these children at the end of this movie. I will say this is a better, let's save the kids movie than Thor Love and Thunder. 
Because yes. they both, <laughs> I was like, yo, this did it way better than Thor did. <laughs> I didn't have to have a weird ass kid uh, fly by my bedroom and be like, oh, <laughs> yeah. save the kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I did love how when they say the animals, like he added the element of like, oh, some of, some of these animals are actually going to be violent. Like there's that monkey that just like rips apart <laughs> that person's <laughs> face. I was like, oh my God. She about to let the evolutionary right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, that. And then I love that. I always like, like, I love this in Justice League. I love this in other movies. I love just when the, the heroes all team up and beat the shit out of the villain. So when they all just beat the ever living shit out of the high evolutionary at the end of this movie, I was like, this is great. This is great. <laughs> it's so like anime and comic book of yeah. just being like, yeah, we're a team. And then everyone just comes and gets their one hit in. Yeah. Uh, so like really fuck them up. Yeah, I really appreciate it a whole lot. Uh, so fun. And then bring us to another dark point of when they rip his fucking face oh off. Oh my God, man. <laughs> Holy shit. I was expecting Oh, that. that was grotesque. Yeah, I was like, oh shit. We're doing that here. There's Ooh. children. But I liked, I kind of liked the reveal because like, yeah, I I definitely didn't think it was a mask. I thought it was maybe like he just... I just thought he pinned his face back on. Yeah. That was a leather face kind of situation. Yeah. He pinned his face. I love that character design. I'm really into that. It looked great, dude. Oh my God, that looks so good. It's so shitty how Nick Fury actually lost his eye and I hate that it's just a (laughs) fucking joke or whatever. Um, But to see that and to see that as like Rocket Raccoon basically ripped his face off. uh, Yeah. As a whole. Uh, I just think it's really cool that it's like you you knew his face was stapled on this whole time, but you never really knew why. Right. And you figured he had augmentation. That's what I um, thought. Yeah. On, yeah. It's like we knew augmentation happened. So we figured he maybe got a little bit crazy and mm-hmm. was experimenting himself a little bit too much. I don't know. I thought that looked really cool. Yeah. So to see him and be like that, see that whole thing. I was like, damn, this is I like this villain. Yeah, like, man. I haven't liked a villain like. I'm not sold on King yet. Like, I, I really oh, not. Dude. I don't think we've done a good job on revealing <laughs> King. Yeah. I like this right so far. I like him more. Not going to lie. Like King. Jackie saw this before I did. And she talked to me about it. She was saying the per- uh, her friend that she saw it with was saying, like, you know, Marvel could solve this Kang problem by just saying, yo, this dude was a very the Kang. At One the of last the Kangs, yeah. <laughs> and this, it's, it's just this. It's just Chuck Woody I mean, from now on. <laughs> he kind of embodies so much things that Kang are supposed to be when it comes to that, like, God yeah. bit of him. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the actor's phenomenal. I think he's done a really great job. He gives me that feeling of, like, okay, this is a really a crazy man that is obsessed with his craft. Yeah. And he can also, like, he's almost got, like, a Shakespearean element to him in his dialogue. Absolutely. Like, he can handle that gravitas and also scream and be terrifying at the same Like, he, yeah. yo, Marvel, Marvel, if you... If you need a problem solved. Uh... I know it'd be so easy. I know y'all want John Boyega or whatever. And I would also think that's interesting. I don't know if that would I don't fit. know if that one works. I do want yeah. him to have more roles. I do love him as an actor Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yeah. But what I've seen on screen with that, I thought that was really great. And I, I would love to see more of that, personally. Yeah, me too. Uh... <laughs> me fucking too. Let's talk about the uh, the ending, the epilogue, the goodbye to these Guardians. This This iteration of them. They didn't kill them. They didn't kill him. They didn't kill any of them. Though I think the one that, that was broke my heart the most was I really wanted Drax and Mantis to go off together as buds. And when that, that didn't... I, I was think like, they oh. should only exist together. No! <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> also, please don't do any solo shit with Mantis. That's going to flop so bad. Oh, I, yeah. yeah no, I, I do not think she can carry anything by herself. I don't need I'm eight sorry. Disney Plus shows spinning off out of this. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but she know we're going to get it. Uh, yeah. But I, I, yeah, so I love that Mantis is going her own way. I love that Drax is the dad. He's no longer this, the destroyer. <laughs> jib, jib. <laughs> he just understood the language. The whole fucking time. <laughs> um, yeah, Drax and Nebula are going to take care of all the people and the kids. Rocket is the new captain. He's the leader of the Guardians with Groot, which we'll talk about in the mid-credits in a bit. And Peter's going home. He goes to Earth to see his, his grandpa. His grandpa that's 100 years old. Yeah. But he still is walking real well. Yeah, he was real. <laughs> yeah, he was he was real spry. <laughs> I don't know what year this is, but apparently humans are fucking killing it because that man was spry. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just thought that I, I felt this is why I think I felt so good coming out of this movie and just so hopeful and just like it was it just felt so good with uh, the, the Florence and the Machine song and them just having a good time. Because usually with every other Guardians movie, the, the, the big... Uh, dance party numbers the opening of both movies um and so they for them to hold off and put it at the end i thought was just a fun like celebration of all these characters and and i thought it was really really well done it was great and that was probably the only reason that i was more okay with the movie being as long as it is because i knew that like we want to have a send-off yes um so for the people that have seen all three movies like this you, you want to spend that much time with these characters whereas like i did go with someone that had never seen any of these movies and they still enjoyed it but they were like damn it's a little long yeah i get it 
you, you don't have as much investment like in these characters the way that everyone else does in here. Where it's like, right. Yeah, I want to see Peter Quill just dance a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it's, if this is the last time for them, I, I want to, I don't want to, I don't, as much as I don't want to see them go, this was, this was probably the best way for it to go. You know? A hundred percent. hundred percent. Sure. Oh, last, last thought I had, I kind of wish we saw more Howard the Duck in that final battle. But that's okay. At least he was in the movie. <laughs> I'm fine with no Howard the Duck. I'm, I'm okay with no Howard the Duck. <laughs> Speaking of new Guardians, mid-credits, we obviously see Rocket as the new leader. We see one of them kids as uh, as part of the team with, with looking like some Captain Marvel-ass powers with them glowy hands. Um, we obviously <laughs> Kraglin and Cosmo, Adam Warlock and his pet, and then a ginormous fucking group. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My man leveled up. He sure fucking did. <laughs> that trend is hitting different. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously it ends with more uh, some red bone come and get your love from the first movie. Um, it was just a nice little callback and great little yeah. last note. It makes me wonder, because uh, I assume Adam Warlock's going to get more screen time, but I'm like, in what capacity? Because I don't feel like we're going to touch Guardians for a while. Yeah. So to put him on the Guardians and have him be like part of that group feels weird which i know at some point i guess he does but i just didn't feel like this is the right place to put him right now right i don't think it will have his own solo stuff at any point no but i do want to see him in other stuff so i do hope he just pops up right at some point. i would imagine like a lot of these characters are maybe on the table for secret wars that's what i was figuring as well yeah 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 same thing with like obviously the last post credits uh, show Star Lord, the legendary Star Lord will return, which I was genuinely surprised by. Yeah, okay. I don't know that I want to see uh, non James Gunn. <laughs> Garth that the is Gals. the other thing. It's like, what is it? Is is it like a Secret Wars? Which I get like with Avengers and Game and Infinity War, they were in it, and it wasn't James Gunn one hundred percent. So that's fine. But like, does Guardians work without James Gunn? I don't quite think so. I, I agree with you. So that's interesting. So yeah, so maybe it would just be some. It would be like a Thor situation. It would just pop up in those movies. He'll pop up in some some Avengers movies, maybe, and that'll be his thing. Maybe. I'm cautiously, I'm not even optimistic about it. I'm just cautious about it. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. It's too soon to tell me that. Uh, yeah, fair okay. enough. Go off. We'll see. Obviously, yeah, James Gunn's headed to DC. As soon as I texted you guys this, I am, I'm very much looking forward to the future of DC after this movie because I'm excited for Superman. I can't wait. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I think this is. Is the first thing timing wise that has managed to work for DC is that James Gunn has made a good movie <laughs> yes. before fully solidifying the fact that he's part of DC now. Where it's like, okay, now we might know that he can make uh, good decisions based on this property. Right. Uh, Marvel's been some stinkers lately. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be real with you. Yeah. And this was the best thing they've put out in at least four movies. And that's wild to think about. Yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. We'll see if, if Marvel's trend continues with this. We got the Marvels coming out in, what, November now? So we got a good break. Still don't know what the hell's happening with Loki Season 2. They still putting that shit out with all the controversy that we already know is happening with it. Who knows? I don't know how much they filmed. <laughs> who, who fucking knows? That's also true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Definitely one of the best trilogies. Definitely in MCU. I, I still think Captain America holds it down for me personally. But then this is easily, easily probably second. I think this has a stronger first movie than Captain America. I think that's Captain fair. Absolutely, I would agree to that. Second and third. I think this one has a law in the middle. A lot of people disagree with me. I think the second movie isn't that great, but I do think one and three are phenomenal in comparison to the mm-hmm. second one. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right, listeners, go check it out if you haven't already. I don't know why you're listening to this. We just spoiled it for you, but still, I would still go see it <laughs> either way. That's it, Brian. Shall we head into our final segment of the week? Let's do it. All right. Hello, Devin. Welcome back. Yo, man, that Guardians movie was so good. Good, (laughs) We'll never know. (laughs) This is free for all. Title pending listeners is a segment where you kind of do whatever you want. Talk about a day, talk about life, recommend stuff, do whatever. It is free for all. I can very quickly go first because I have been very busy, so I haven't had time for much. But I did play about the first hour of the new Horizon Zero Dawn, or not Zero Dawn, Forbidden West, uh, the Burning Shores DLC that dropped a couple of weeks ago. Mm, I heard we hate it because of women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that the consensus? That's the consensus. I don't know. <laughs> is that as men, we don't like women. Is, uh, what, what yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. that's I, what see. I see, I see, I see. <laughs> I see. I was just excited to get back into that world, um, and I started playing it, and I'm and again, like I said, the story element was probably my one of my favorite bits of of that second game once it actually was the story and not so much the open world stuff. And I think based on what I'm playing and what I've heard, I'm going to really enjoy this basically because 
it's only like eight to ten hours long. Let's go. And I kind of I'm like, I'm so excited for that. <laughs> I'm like, yes, give me a decent time. That's not like a million because I think I can't remember how much I've logged into that game before, but it's probably easily over 70 hours Good. total. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's way too much. I don't want to play that game for that long. No, not because it's not fun, but it's because I'm, I'm sick. I'm just tired. So I'm excited to keep playing. I've already got introduced to new characters and new environments and, and new enemies and stuff. And so I'm excited to keep going. It's very fun. Yeah. Horizon Zero or uh, for Burning Shores. It's dope. Going to Hollywood. A really under, like a really, like it's weird because it's a AAA game and I don't think it's underselling by any means, but it still somehow is a slept on game. Yeah. People, more people need to know about the Horizon Zero down to Horizon Forbidden West. I feel like it's just not getting the, the rep that it deserves. So it always comes out in terrible. Their release windows are terrible, <laughs> terrible, man. Sony literally competes with itself sometimes, which is really wild. Yeah. Like, how do you fuck that up? You're the same company. Like. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Isn't it uh, Bow and Arrow Combat too? Yeah. Dude, Bow and Arrow Combat just slaps. It's great. Games. Sony it's learned yeah. that too early, and I wish they didn't, because now every game has it. <laughs> if you play a Sony Everyone. game, you're going to get a fucking Bow and Arrow at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, but keep them coming. Keep them coming. It's phenomenal. Um, Obviously, uh, the world will never hear from this game again once uh when when Zelda comes out. What is oh, it, like in a week yeah, or two or some pretty shit? Pretty soon. I'm pretty sure our reviews are already coming out, and oh, it's shit. looking good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so no one gonna be talking about horizon nothing star wars just came out yeah. that no one gonna be talking about that yeah. no it's done mm -hmm. it's done for the next like six months <laughs> i'll play both of those games when they come out on pc uh in a working condition a year from now <laughs> fair enough right yeah <laughs> and as usual shout out to gotta wear for different Ooh, PlayStation games. all right i saw the game on sale for 30 dollars recently who's next i can go next speaking of games uh that have come out on pc as you guys know, I have been playing a game called Redfall, the most recent AAA game. Oh, that's right. Published by Microsoft Studios. That is a Microsoft exclusive. Of mm -hmm. course, it's not on PlayStation. That was a whole big rump and roll. Uh -oh. The uh -oh. fact that there was a PlayStation version that existed. Um, this is a game that came out that was basically about a island of the town called Redfall and that there has been a science experiment gone wrong that has led to vampires existing and taking over the town. It is a looter shooter similar to Borderlands. Uh, people that know me know that as of recently, I've become very into Borderlands. I had loved Borderlands 2 specifically and put 100 hours into that game, which is crazy because I put 100 hours into <laughs> very few games in my life. Uh, this game fucking sucks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this game fucking oh, no. sucks, dude. What a builder. <laughs> um, this game is made by Arcane <laughs> Studios. It's known for the accolades of Prey and also Deathloop, which is almost like a Death game of the year contender. Uh, a huge game. I don't know. Phenomenal I game. will love to know when the YouTube video of how the production of this game went comes out because something went wrong. Something right. very fundamentally went wrong when they made this game. This game is literally incomplete i oh. played about eight hours into it i probably got what was considered about halfway through the game i will tell you the reason that i deleted it in a second <laughs> but basically oh. this game is broken it is wait you've already deleted it. i've deleted it first of all <laughs> first things first i installed this game it is over 100 gigabytes on my ssd damn this game wow. has no reason for it being 100 gigabytes you know what else 100 gigabytes modern warfare 2 yeah a beautiful <laughs> game with so much into it and also a whole battle royale in it with a huge <laughs> map this game has none of that the map is empty there's almost barely any fucking people to fight in this fucking game i just run into houses see three enemies kill them by accident and then move on with my life and that's every single point of this game this game is so atrocious uh, there oh. was a point in time where I was playing and I was doing a quest and all the artificial intelligence broke. I'm talking about the characters ceased to exist. So I go into a room <laughs> and there's a bunch of vampires in there and they don't attack me. I can't attack them. They literally don't exist. They're just standing still in the world and I can't even interact with them. Oh, no. That is atrocious. That is so bad. The quests are boring. It's all just collection quests that are really just the same. The characters are bland, vanilla, and boring. There's not even real cutscenes in this game. They do this weird thing where they put an in-engine cutscene thing where it's just stills of like almost like a comic book oh, kind of thing. But yeah. it's not because they wanted to make Ooh. it cool and like edgy and you know artistic. It's just lazy. It's cheap. It's just cheap and lazy. <laughs> Everything in this game is just cheap and lazy. Everything feels so clunky. I tried my hardest mm. to like make it feel good by trying to like play with movement mechanics and stuff like that. And the game almost like punished me for it over and over again. Where it just felt so bad to try to have fun. 
Every time I try to have fun, this game punished me for it. I recommend it Dang to no it. one. <laughs> I truly recommend Damn. it to no one. It's an unfinished video game. Fun. And the biggest thing is, yes, it did come out on Game Pass, but outside of Game Pass, this is a $70 game. This game, if even if Ooh. it came out in 2009, it would still be maybe a 6 out of 10 at best. Right. Borderlands is better than better in every <laughs> no. way, shape, and form. Yo, Microsoft can't catch a yeah. break. And I, that's what's so disappointing, because I know Starfield's coming out in about a month, um, and that's really scary to like be like, we know that's been delayed. Also, uh, on PC, it runs at 60 frames per second. On Xbox, it runs at 30. It is hard capped at 30 frames mm. per second for a $70 game. And uh, we're in so far into this generation. That's not okay anymore. We can't mm. get away with that anymore. You know what I mean? I'm in pl- I play on 240 yeah. frames per second on my PC. I play Halo at 240 frames per second. That's crazy, bro. That's ridiculous. Yeah. But I did delete nuts. the game. I was, gonna, I was planning on beating it. I wanted to finish the game. I tried to play with a friend. And when I stopped playing with my friend and I went to go boot up the game by myself, it deleted my character. You are fucking cursed with that <laughs> shit, dude. You are cursed yeah. forever. <laughs> it deleted my fucking character, which has already said that if you do oh progress the story, whoever the host is progress the story, no one else progresses the story. Right. So you have to go back to the beginning or whatever you were doing beforehand when you do the character. They said, fuck that. They deleted my character. My character doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> she was level like 15 or something. Doesn't exist. She's fucking gone. So that's when oh, I was like, I Lord. can't do it anymore. This is too much for me. I'm not replaying this yeah. game for eight more hours. I am deleting it. So I delete it. Dude, it's it's Good. unfortunate how Good. often this is happening to games lately. <laughs> PC is just not doing well when it comes to games. I don't know why they're just trying to rush out ports. Like, I understand that it is difficult yeah. to make a port for PC because you aren't just making something for one single console. But Jesus Christ, do better. Like, either don't put out the port yeah. or just take your time. Like, <laughs> Yeah, fair enough, man. That's rough. I recommend no one. Four out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is pretty interesting, and it leads pretty perfectly to my free for all, <sighs> which is more of a question Ooh. to you two. Perfectly to you two, actually. All right. Mainly because you know, the other week my girlfriend was out on a flight, so I had like a night to myself, day afternoon to myself, and I was like, you know what? I'm an adult. I got money now. I'm gonna go get <laughs> Jedi Survivor <gasps> and play it. But guess what? You can't play it on my old oh. ass Xbox One. <laughs> so now, gentlemen, I'm at a crossroads. I'm at a crossroads oh, because boy. I have to decide how to upgrade because I really want to play this game. Mm-hmm. So what do I do? Do I get a PS5 or do I get a gaming PC? Do you guys want to fight like <laughs> like fist fist to fist <laughs> fight it or I, I'm I'm here to to hear some arguments. I'm gonna tell you right side. now, you're not get the fist fight that you want from me at least as someone that is a PC gamer. <laughs> Um, Brian just damn. talked about how much his PC <laughs> games don't work <laughs> for the past five minutes. First of all, uh, Jedi that Survivor is, is still broken on PC. So <laughs> <laughs> that's probably points against PC. Um, I will say I do love my PC. I do love playing video games on PC. I don't touch my other consoles because of PC. I just enjoy right. having a smaller mm-hmm. screen. It just feels more engaged when I am the way that I am. I think in order for me to even beat any of the PS4 games that I still have to beat, I'm probably going to have to connect it to my monitor. I just don't know that I can play on big screens anymore because mm-hmm. I've gotten so used to playing mm-hmm. video games. Oh, yeah, no. Way. I'm with it. I'm with it. Mm-hmm. I connect to, to my to my monitor now for, for games, and it's way I kind of think that's like the the premier way to play video games now. That there, might be a yeah. hot take. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't like the 50th screen it anymore. It looks a lot better. Most yeah. games. Most games do. That being said, PC for gaming, I feel like PC for solely gaming is really weird because it's so expensive. I feel like you get a PC for gaming because Mm -hmm. you want to do other things with it as well. Like, I would say someone like maybe Oscar, maybe, that also wants to do, like, editing and stuff like that. Yeah. That would make sense. But Mm -hmm. if you're solely doing it for gaming, spending, like, $900 to $1,500 on a PC is kind of wild compared to spending a $500 to know that that is all you have to spend for five years. You know what I mean? When it comes to console gaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about, like, a gaming laptop? Is that still a thing? Or yeah, is that I mean, dead? there's gaming laptops that exist. And uh, I had sent some to Oscar that were as low as 700 that would definitely still play, like, premier games up to maybe, like, 13, 1400. Right. And then you can get mods. Yeah, I mean, mods are great. That's the thing. I love PC. It, it. I think it all depends on how much you're going to invest in that PC. Exactly. Like like you were saying, the yeah. mods section of it. It's like a, you know? it's like a car. Yeah. Like, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah. <laughs> am I ever going to drive to, like, 150 miles per hour? No. But it's right. cool that I can. Right. So it becomes, like, kind of its own hobby <laughs> in itself that has nothing to do with playing video games at all. It's just about having cool shit. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's kind of that yeah. thing. So if that's something that you're really interested in, yeah. you want to build your own, things like that, that's one thing. If you're just a guy that wants to play video games, I don't know that I'd recommend it so much personally. The only thing that keeps me in it is, like, I really want to play, like, 
the Witcher mods <laughs> and like mm. certain mods, like some someday, someday. So is that worth eleven hundred dollars out yeah, of I mean, your paycheck? That's what I'm saying. Like, and I, I I'll, I'll yeah. even help out Brian's PC side in terms of like, I know you're a big Xbox person, and you would still get to keep Game Pass if you went the PC route. And a lot it's of true, P- true. PlayStation games are having PC port mm-hmm. stuff. Like God of War is on there now. I don't think mm-hmm. Ragnarok's on there yet. Not yet no. But like the first Horizons on there, Last of Us is on there. It's true. So like you'd ha- you'd get to play the biggest PlayStation games still. But again, I think it comes down to how much you want to spend and how much you think you're actually going to fucking use it. Yeah, I mean Brian did say it yeah. best. Like I as a, guys as a player that you know basically logs in logs in to play Rocket League and FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe you should stick to the PS. Yeah, that being said, I would say if you're going between Xbox and PS5, I would say PS5. Yeah, we know Phil Spencer would, yeah. has recently come out and said that they are losing the console war and they understand that and they know exactly why. Oh yeah, X- Xbox is never not yeah. in question. Like that's yeah. it's dead. I, the yeah. only After thing I, I would say one, is get the Xbox Series S only because you might have $200 laying around. Uh, you just, right, you, you right. just have to have $200 yeah. you found on the floor and you're like, that's not <laughs> enough for a PlayStation, but I can go ahead and get an Xbox. That would be the only reason yeah. I would think to get anything Xbox um, and yeah. still play the games that mm-hmm. you love. Absolutely. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could do that and then put off the discussion, you know, put off the, the PS5 purchase a little longer. I just, I really want to play Jedi Survivor and I keep seeing stuff on like YouTube and like Instagram <laughs> and stuff. I'm, I know it's just going to get spoiled. Get like that. with the longer yeah. I wait, yeah. the more it's going to I'm, you know, I'm in the same boat. Yeah. yeah I, haven't, I haven't gotten it because I was like, ah, I'm, I, don't, I just don't have time to play it and I don't want to spend 70 bucks on a game that I won't play right play. now. Right, exactly. Because it's probably so, going to go on sale pretty soon. It's an EA game. So. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, it's totally worth it to put, you know, $600 just to avoid spoilers. <laughs> so I I and that's what I'm saying. That, <laughs> that's why I'm like, it's like, if you really want to play it like right now, I'd say Xbox Series S and just be a PlayStation later. Because right now, for me personally, there's not enough on PlayStation for me to buy a whole system for all those games that are on there. Because a lot of them, like mm-hmm. Oscar said, are already on PC. Um, the ones that aren't, they're not enough for me to spend six hundred dollars. But I think the difference there for yeah. Brian is that Devin, you've never had a PS4. True. So you, mm-hmm. you do have with a, the PS5, a you would get all those catalog of PS4 yeah. games that you missed yeah, already yeah. to play. True. Spider Man. Yeah, you would get mm-hmm. you would get all that shit potentially. So it's in yeah, sixty man. frames per second because it's not a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> 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 That's true. I mean, I feel like you know, I'm not an Android guy. I'm an iPhone guy. Simplicity. So I mean, the idea of playing with mods and like what, all the cool things you can do on PC is is always very. It's always a fun that, idea. Uh, I, I'm I'm with you on. that. I will yeah. say I love mods. Yeah. I, one of the play, one of the reasons <laughs> I love PC is because I love mods. I do love the fact that I can just yeah. make. I've been playing Skyrim for 11 years because I've made Skyrim 27 different games over the course of 10 years. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. But, it's incredible. Well, I I will keep you boys posted on absolutely on how this I'll develops. It yes, uh, it may be an on an ongoing saga <laughs> that just goes on for a long time because I'm pretty lazy. <laughs> Understandable. I get yeah, that's right. It's on. It's on the back. It's a tough it's choice. Tough choice. From my from my notes, I wrote down uh, two two. It's tied oh, two two for points for PC versus <laughs> PS five. So between uh, PC and PlayStation, Xbox is even a, a a look at. It's not even on the list. Xbox is not on the list, no. <laughs> Xbox One was probably the worst system in the last 10 years. Oof. And I'm not even kidding. Oof. It's worse than Dreamcast, probably. Starting with the name. Yep, yep. absolutely. <laughs> that ship has sailed. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listeners. That is our show for the week. We hope you enjoyed it. You can email us at thefortressof at gmail.com. Fortress with F-O-U-R. Feel free to email us any questions, feedback, recommendations, or anything like that. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and the YouTube channel at the Fortress of. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your grandma, tell your cats. Like a beautiful Bollywood movie, follow the three R's, rate, review, and recommend this to all and everyone you know. Thank you, Jackie, for helping edit the podcast every week. Thank you, Brian, for the art. Alex for the music. Devin, thank you for being here, even when you're not here. You can find Brian on Instagram at ITZ underscore, by the way. Alex at Peterson Films. And Devin, you can find him fucking talent. It's just on the street taking a poll of gaming PC versus <laughs> PS5. <laughs> Gathering his notes. <laughs> I, wonder what, I wonder what you'd get. On the street, I guess it depends on you the street. To, you have to pay a yeah, dollar. Yeah, it really would. How does it work? You put a dollar in the in the one bag of the other bag. <laughs> yeah. It's for the PC fun. I like that idea. <laughs> yeah, people voting help me with money. pay before Give me a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> put a dollar. Your ballot is a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> how much? How much do you care about your opinion? Yeah, uh, that's yeah. Put your money where PC your nerds is, would definitely literally. be throwing money in there. They'll do anything, <laughs> anything to convince people that PC is better. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> um, next week. Uh, maybe we do some Star Wars Visions, listeners. Maybe we go through that. We also know that that mm. came out. Maybe we, we were delayed with Guardians. Obviously, it was too big of a week to talk about both. 
Maybe we get some visions next week, season two. I have not watched any. I don't think Brian has either, but Devin says good things so far, right? I love a good anthology. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's a it's a pretty solid. I, I would say better than season one Ooh, so far. But there you go. Let me set your expectations right. I know. Just, it's it's okay. <laughs> all right, all right. It's, it's okay. Uh, and as usual, happy holidays, everyone. And put a code on us. Code out there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go fucking bed. Go. <laughs> Everybody's so tired. See you next week, everyone. Another episode in the Fortress of...